Eli Lilly is pulling out the big guns and they're not afraid to shoot. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Allie. I'm on a fantabulous weight loss journey and hopefully you'll subscribe and come along for the ride because I put out new videos every day. And today we're talking about the cease and desist letters that are going out from Eli Lilly's attorneys. So if you are familiar with compounding and how everything works. Basically, when there's a time of shortage, we can have compounds. And compounding has been around for a long, long time. This is not something new. So, of course, Eli Lilly has this strategy, which I, I, I was thinking that they were going to start this way. So here is my prediction for what's going to happen. So Eli Lilly tries to take uh, trisepatide off of the shortage list, which of course they don't get to do. The FDA actually has to do that. By the way, if you're on trisepatide, Zepbound, Manjaro, and you are experiencing shortage, please go to the link in my description box and report your shortage wherever you are, because that is the only way that we are going to keep them from just claiming that there's no more shortage. Okay. Back to the drama. So with compounding, these companies, these pharmaceutical companies are missing out on a lot of money, right? And it, it's their own fault, you know, because they married themselves to this, you know, auto injector pen and then refused to change gears when it became obvious that they couldn't keep up after the first shortage happened. You know, it, it's just been like this yo-yo cycle. Well, now they've decided that they're going to start with Zepbound and they're going to release single dose vials for the lowest two doses, 2.5 and 5. And I think this is them testing the waters for getting it out of shortage so that they can stop these compounding um, telehealth companies, right, from capitalizing all of the money. So what they're going to do is they're going to start small. And I'm going to put an image up on the screen of the um, cease and desist letter that a small med spa had received. And they're going to start small, right? Because Small doctor's offices, small med spas, right? These are mom and pop shops or, you know, doctor conglomerates where it's like a group of doctors and they are not going to risk being sued by a pharmaceutical company because holy crap, pharmaceutical companies have entirely too much power and entirely too much money here in the US. It would not be smart for them to go up against them. So those are gonna be the first players to drop out of the race. They're gonna say, hey, it's not worth it for me to lose my entire medical practice over a GLP-1 med. And they'll just stop offering it. So that's gonna be your local mom and pop shops, your med spas, your weight loss centers, right? The, the lower end. The next round, is going to be the larger compounding pharmacies and telehealth companies. And hopefully if these companies were run by smart people who knew that this day was going to come eventually, they have a plan in place. Um, I, I could speculate on a couple of different things that they might do, but I think it's just going to be interesting to see how they navigate the space because, again, it's a lot of money. So we'll see what the compounding pharmacies do. Technically speaking, at this point, as of today, no one is in violation because trisepatide has not been removed from the shortage list. 
until the FDA themselves removes it from the shortage list, there's not really a whole lot that an Eli Lilly lawyer can do other than to send you a cease and desist, scare the crap out of you, right? So that you just stop on your own, which, you know, saves them money because then they don't have to go after every single little mom and pop shop and med spa, you know, when there's 10 on in every city. So this is kind of like the first wave the second wave, they'll be moving up the tier, right? So you knock out your, your low hanging fruit first, and then you move up to, you know, what requires more energy. And hopefully these telehealth companies are going to fight back. Now, if trisepatide is taking, taken off of the shortage list, these telehealth companies are going to have to have some kind of workaround. They're, they're going to have to. Now, keep in mind, compounding in general is designed because not everybody can take every medication. People have allergies. People have allergic reactions to preservatives, to, you know, stabilizers, to the active, you know, not necessarily the active ingredient, but other ingredients that are in a medication. So compounding itself is not going to go away but it may take a little bit more tweaking than just adding a B12 to it. They may have to pair it with something else. They may have to um, create a whole new type of GLP-1 combo. We're, we're just gonna have to see which direction they're gonna go. Um, for the telehealth companies that were just a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, they just jumped in to get in on the money. And then when the time comes, they're just going to jump out. I think that you will see a lot more of them switch to research peptides, which are peptides that are not GOP ones. They are other peptides that they claim do other things. They can help you lose weight. They can help you with your skin that can help you with, you know, your energy, like, right? Except there's not a whole lot of research that any of that stuff works. Just because you name a shot lipo something something doesn't mean that you're going to lose weight. So please be very, very careful with that. Um, there are quite a few influencers who are out there promoting those research peptides. Um, but it's impossible to know if they actually work or if it's just because those influencers are on a GLP-1, right? Like, I could claim that my multivitamin is helping me lose weight, but we all know that I'm on a GLP-1 and that's what's helping me lose weight, right? So it, it's just one of those things. You just have to be careful. But I think that there are going to be a lot more telehealth companies that are going to go that route. And then they'll just wait for the next GLP-1, you know, or GLP and GLP-1 combo to come out and go into shortage. And then, right, and then they'll jump on that bandwagon. So I think it'll be interesting. Um, I don't know how they're going to navigate this, but I'm sure that they have a plan. And I've talked about that in previous videos. So if you would like to know my thoughts on that, definitely go check those out. Um, it's certainly not time to panic. I am someone who um, always wants to have a backup plan. So while my medication is covered by insurance currently, it doesn't mean that it always will be. And, um, you know, I had a backup plan for going to compound if there was an issue with insurance coverage. Um, you know, it, it will likely be vice versa if you are on a compound because insurance didn't cover it, right? You may need to get your medical records from your telehealth company. You know, this is where having all of that lab work that I recommend that you get every three months is going to be helpful. This is why staying up with your, you know, general practitioner is important because 
you need you will need to have all of that proof in order to fight your insurance company. And if you just opted to go through a compound pharmacy and telehealth company and they didn't require labs and they didn't require you to weigh in and they didn't require you to do anything, you're, you're going to be in a little bit of a pickle and you should probably start saving money now so that you can either purchase name brand um, you know, while using the coupon, which is, you know, going to run you anywhere from $500 to $600 or, you know, so that you can stock up on um, compound and, and try to wait through it. Um, it's really going to be challenging. It's really going to be challenging. It's not going to be fun for people. You've got a little bit of time because like I said, trisepatide has not been taken off of the shortage list yet, but we're just going to have to wait and see what is Eli Lilly going to do in the future. Oh, my last prediction, I predict that the highest doses will never be available in the single dose files. That's going to be my guess because once they eliminate the competition from compounding, if they don't eliminate the risk of people using or obtaining 15 milligram trisepatide and then breaking that down into smaller doses, if it's available in a single dose vial, it's going to make, e make it easier for people to break it apart. Um, to make smaller doses. So for example, if you were on five milligram trisepatide, but you're having to pay out of pocket, right? People would get a 15 in a single dose vial, right? They're still paying out of pocket, same price, but they would then take that 15 and turn it into fives. So I don't anticipate that the highest doses are ever going to be available in a single dose file. That's my prediction. I could be wrong, but we'll see what it is that they do. But since so many people are already used to doing their dosing with compounding, I think that that is going to be the strategy for Eli Lilly. I think that the smaller doses, maybe up to like 7.5, maybe even 10, um, will be available in the vials eventually, but I think those higher doses, I think they're just not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Not until we reach a point where another GLP-1 comes out or you know, a generic comes out, right? Then, of course, they'll make everything available and the price will drop and all that jazz. So, if you found this video helpful, definitely give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you're looking for a positive only support group, I've got you covered. Link is in the description box below. And like I said, don't panic. We're not to panic point yet, but you need to be thinking about your plan. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. And as always, be kind. Rewind.